905. Both of these, both of these pilots, uh, Leo, have experienced flameouts on fighter aircraft in the past. A flameout meaning the engine has gone dead, and they have landed these high-speed aircraft uh, as they will be landing this one today. That's right. Well, most military pilots practice flameout approaches, so it's nothing new to land an airplane without any power on it, as long as you have sufficient energy and altitude and airspeed to make the runway. The airplane flies perfectly normal and should be no problem at all with the flameout approach today because throughout the entire profile, Fred's going to be in good position to make a safe landing on the lake bed from any place in his trajectory. And he's got plenty of room. This is not your run-of-the-mill commercial or military airport here. The runway runs at least seven miles long. The uh, touchdown point is about two and a half miles into the runway, so he's got five miles and then some out in front of him. He's got plenty of underrun and plenty of overrun, and he can land crossways if he'd like, if necessary. You know, Leo, you... The other night... Uh, uh, two minutes, 41 seconds from pushover. Uh, pushover is that point at which the 747 and the shuttle will be at their maximum altitude. Then the 747 does push over into a dive so that it is diving at a minus six degree angle so that the shuttle sitting on top of the 747 is uh, parallel to the ground. I think I've got that right, Leo. The attitude is parallel to the ground, that's correct. You know, you kept reminding me the other night of several things, and uh, you said several times the brakes. This is the first time they are going to try the brakes. That's right. Normally in an airplane, you do some taxi tests and braking tests before you fly it. But with the shuttle, this, is, this has not been uh, possible. So this will, today will be the first time that push over minus two. Today will be the first time that uh, Fred has had a chance to really control the airplane during a rollout and do braking and nose wheel steering. Houston, Mission Control the control center that controlled our flights to the moon is controlling this mission and you're hearing uh, two voices from Houston the uh, capsule communicator he still re retains that name even though there is no capsule uh, in this uh, space shuttle is Bo Bobko the United States Air Force a colonel he is an astronaut and the other voice is the voice of mission control Jack Riley Mark, this shot is coming from Chase 4, Stand which is... Stand by for pushover minus one. Chase 4 is flying about 1,000 feet off the right wing, so this is probably the best view in town Mark, of the, of the separation. And I think we ought to explain what chase means, Leo. There are a couple of T-38 planes up there, maybe as many as five. I saw three take off earlier, and they are following this flight pattern all the way. And Enterprise Houston is go for pushover. Go for pushover. You're going to see the 747 dip its nose down. Up to the launch heading. And up. We should see a nice positive separation with a very rapid clearance of the 747's tail. Okay, Enterprise is uh, set. Thanks for the left, Mitch. You bet. About 38 seconds after pushover is achieved separation will be achieved. Again, pushover is the high altitude, the highest altitude at which this configuration is flying. The 747. We're coming up on four seconds to push over. Let's listen in. Two, one, push over. Houston copies push over. The 747 is now running into a dive. The shuttle should be parallel to the Earth. Accelerating now at airspeed 205. At 270, he'll do the set. Altitude 27. 27,000 altitude. Air Separation comes at 21,700 feet, give or take a couple okay, of minutes. Two lights, uh, two. Houston is go for set. Have a great flight. Go for separation. It has never flown free before. This uh, is the very first time. You'll hear a launch ready uh, as soon as the conditions are right for separation. Launch ready. There, we go. there it is. And there it goes. Beautiful separation. Nice and clear. Beautiful separation. Two, clear. And it's okay, clear. GPC the chase plane. light, lost the sink on two, pushing over. And a big X on computer number two. And it will roll to the right. Roger, stand by and halt on GPC number two. This has never happened before. It is flying on its own. Roger. And Leo, they'll have a quick... Flying good. Flying good is the Roger. report. 
They lost one computer in set, but this is not a problem. We have four computers for the primary flight control system. Now at about 20,000 feet, they were... Hayes conducting a practice landing at altitude. I was just going to say that a practice landing at about 20,000 feet. In other words, they'll slower down to their landing speed, which is about 185 knots. See how the shuttle feels to them, and then they'll pick up speed and come around. Uh, they're taking a race course, uh, a course, a race course course. I don't know whether that sounds right or not, but they're following a race course pattern, and they'll be heading due north for about 9.4 miles, then they'll take a big arc to the west for about 9 miles, and then heading home, a 9.4 mile trip to touchdown just behind us here at Edwards Air Force Base. Okay, 11 Alpha, pushing over. Yeah, Fred has... Fred has five minutes to learn how to fly this airplane before he lands it. <laughs> That's right, five minutes to touchdown. It doesn't sound like so much, but it is when you're flying an aircraft for the very first time, Leo. Enterprise Houston, we show perhaps a slightly low LOD. What is LOD? That means he's probably going to have to turn base a little bit earlier because he's not going to have quite as much energy as anticipated. So he'll turn base a little bit early. He'll still make the landing touchdown. Enterprise, point. you're clear to start the turn. Starting his turn to he's base now. The turn. Okay, he'll be it's making... It's really tight, uh, Bo. In fact, I think it's a little... Uh better than the OLS-TA uh, field. Great. Fred Hayes is flying this aircraft. He is the commander, and he is in control. Fred said it flies better than their training aircraft. Well, that's, uh, that's good news. Kind of thing pilots like to know and hear. It's turning left to make about a 180-degree arc, and then we'll be heading due south. Leo, when it comes in for a landing, it'll begin a descent. 48 minutes, 28 seconds past the hour. It is descending now, it's, it, and its rate of descent is about four times faster than that of your average commercial airliner, but nobody is too worried about that. A commercial airliner could land at this speed with no trouble at all. Fred doesn't agree with the ground we analysis. 30% speed brakes. Hey, hey. Board, coming open to 30. They are high on energy, so he's opening his speed brakes a little bit sooner than normal to dissipate some of that excess energy he has. Okay, the speed brakes open up speed because the shuttle in. is in a dive. The speed brakes will hold the speed back so that that shuttle is averaging about 270 knots or 310 miles per hour. Now they're going to 50% brakes. Normally they only go to 30 on this flight. But evidently, evidently, he does have excess energy, so they're going to open to 50 to dissipate the energy, so the landing will be nominal. Excess energy is a pilot's way of saying he's going too fast. Too fast and too high. Energy potential good. Enterprise, we show eight miles out, nine potential. We'll leave you here. Okay? Okay, looking good. About two minutes to the landing, about a minute and a half, rather. 280. Okay, why don't you use yours until we get a little more? Leo, the rate of speed right now, the rate of descent is about four times what a commercial airliner uses, and his speed is about two and a half times as he approaches the runway. He'll land at about 185 knots, or 212 miles per hour. A DC-9 would land at about 130 knots, or 150 miles per hour, and it's looking beautiful. We should be able to eyeball it from our perch just beyond the runway here at Edwards Air Force Base. Fido says it looks super. It looks super. I have him on the glasses, Mark, now. Okay, we've got him. He's coming in. Should be about, what, 3,000 feet up there now, Leo? Pre-flare. Yeah, he's at... Speed brake's coming in now. He's at the pre-flare, so he's oh, flaring now onto a... Okay, the flare... One and a half degree glide slope. The flare will slow him down for the landing. A pre-flare, then will be a flare. That means he's lifting his nose up to slow the shuttle down. Coming down at 270. He looks beautiful. Putting the gear down just a little bit fast, but this he's is got only, some excess energy. Only the second time the gear has come down. Gear looks good. They are locked into place. This has never been attempted. And it is... 10... Holding just 10, about 220 at about five feet, four feet, getting some drop, four feet, down, three feet, down, two feet, and it's down. It's, it's down. Feet. It has 
landed, and it looks beautiful. It'll take about 30 seconds before it rolls to a halt. Leo, that was absolutely letter perfect from my view. Four, three, two, one. Nose gear down. He's, we'll see you, babe. He now steers it with the rudder. Maintains, uh, stays on the runway with the rudder. He's got his speed brakes are fully open. Leo, in the event anybody's concerned about what appears as smoke on the screen, that's really sand. This lake bed does not have an artificial uh, surface over it, and that is sand being picked up by the shuttle. The five minute and 10 or 20 second flight has been a success. The two astronauts have reported that they are okay, and the mission appears, at least from our point of view, to have been perfect, Leo. Yeah, it was beautiful. He was a little bit fast and high, and he touched down a little higher further down the runway, but the touchdown was a very low sink rate. Okay, Leo, let's just listen in. Perhaps we can hear from Fred Hayes or Gordon Fullerton, the two astronauts on board that shuttle. Yes, they're not saying much. They're going to roll out very gently. They're not going to break to a sudden stop. They want to check out the nose wheel steering the last 60 knots of the, of the velocity, so... They'll take their time getting it stopped. Leo Krupp, are you now satisfied those brakes worked? Everything worked. It was beautiful. <laughs> Just the way you flew it in the simulator those many times. He did inadvertently get a little high uh, on energy, but other than that, uh, the flight was perfectly nominal. Just to repeat, the shuttle did not go into space today. This was the very first time it flew by itself. It was launched from atop a 747 jumbo jet at about 21,000 feet, flew 33 miles, took a bit over five minutes, and came into a safe landing here. There were no engines on board. It was a glider, acted like a glider, was flown like a glider, and was a successful glider. Congratulations, it was a beautiful flight. About a quarter knot, and we just stopped. Just came to a stop now. Okay, Roger, Leo, and the next stop. time we'll see this vehicle fly, we expect, will be in the last week of August. I think they have pencil in an August uh, 30th uh, date for the next uh, free flight. And Leo, this successful flight did not answer two major questions. The controversy over whether the $6.9 billion shuttle product project is worth it and whether there will be a need for the hundreds of space flights necessary to uh, amortize the cost, as NASA says there will. But the flight was never intended to answer those questions. It answered at least three others, though. Yes, the shuttle can fly like a glider. Yes, it can land like one. And yes, once the shuttle landed, the brakes, Leo, did work. Leo Krupp, thank you. This is Morton Dean and thank Leo you. Krupp at Edwards Air Force Base, California. Breakfast! American children really have a lot. But according to the U.S. government, almost 50% of all the children in this country fail to get their recommended daily allowance of vitamin C. That's why I'm glad my children love the taste of Tang Instant Breakfast Drink. Each glass contains a full day's supply of vitamin C. Sure tastes good after a night in the wilderness, Mom. Look for Tang in the convenient new 9-quart canister. It's here, the simplest camera you ever use. Polaroid's new One Step. The only thing you touch is the button. You never focus. Long shots, close shots, any shots. Just point it and press the button. The motor hands you SX-70 pictures that develop in minutes, automatically. Polaroid's new One Step. You never focus, and it's only $39.95, motor and all. Take the One Step. This portion was sponsored by Polaroid's One Step, the motor-driven instant camera you never focus. This has been a CBS News special report. Space Shuttle, the first voyage. This is CBS.